Okay, so get this right. We're going deep on some U.S.-Japan military planning. Uh-huh. But it's not the usual top secret stuff. This is coming out through, like, leaks and public talks. Interesting. It's almost as if they want the world to know. Yeah. Especially China. You right. know, we're talking joint operations, right? Right. If there's a conflict in the Taiwan Strait and some of what they're saying about U.S. defense production, mm. it's kind of eye-opening, to say the least. Yeah, it is intriguing how this information is coming to light. Right. This open discussion, I think, might be a carefully calculated strategy to deter China. So instead of whispering secrets, they're practically <laughs> shouting it from the rooftops. Exactly. Wow. Kyoto News and Reuters reports they lay out a joint military plan. Okay. It involves deploying missile units to Japan's southwest islands mm -hmm. and possibly even the Philippines. Okay. This includes not just standard missile units, but yeah. also marine littoral regiments, which are designed for rapid deployment. Yep. And they have significant striking power, you yeah, know, really. and it goes beyond just conventional firepower. Oh. It involves specialized units that are focused on space, cyber, uh -huh. and even electromagnetic warfare. Hold on. Electromagnetic warfare. What does that even like look like? Think of it as disrupting or disabling enemy systems oh, Okay. through targeted electromagnetic pulses or radio waves. I see. It's a relatively new and rapidly evolving area of warfare. Wow. And its inclusion in this plan really speaks to the complex nature of modern conflict. So it's not just about missiles and boots on the ground anymore. No. It's about like controlling the entire battle space. Yes. Even the like invisible parts. Precisely. And this joint plan really aligns with a broader trend we're seeing yeah. of increasing US military presence in the region. Hmm. But what stands out is the overt nature of this cooperation yeah. and crucially the direct involvement of Japan. That's right. Japan's participation in this kind of missile deployment plan, it feels significant. They've, they've traditionally maintained a more pacifist stance, haven't they? They have, and that's what makes this so interesting. Right. Joint deployment are the key words here. Yeah. It marks a potential turning point in mm. Japan's military posture. To really grasp the magnitude of this, yeah. we need to consider Japan's latent military potential. Yeah. Imagine, for a moment, a Japan not just economically powerful, yeah. but also militarily active and fully aligned with U.S. objectives. So, like, if they flipped a switch yeah. and certainly became a major military force. Precisely. Wow. It's a scenario that might have some people in Beijing losing sleep. I'm mad. Let's compare this to Israel, for instance. I... Despite its small size, Israel has developed incredibly sophisticated mm. and powerful armed forces, largely out of necessity for its own defense. Right. Now imagine that level of capability, but scaled up to Japan's size and resources. Okay, that's that's starting to paint a pretty intense picture. It is. A militarily active Japan, working hand in hand with the U.S. Yeah. That's definitely sending a message. But hold on a sec. There's another side to this coin, isn't there? There is. This recent simulation exercise by the U.S. Congressional Executive Commission on China, the CECC, yeah. it's raising some serious red flags about the U.S. side of this whole equation. It is. The CECC's findings. Yeah. They're kind of a sobering reminder that projecting military power. Right. That's one thing. Yeah. But sustaining it is another altogether. Absolutely. Their simulations suggest that the U.S. could deplete its stockpiles of essential munitions uh -huh. surprisingly quickly in a Taiwan street conflict. Yeah. So we're talking about, like, running out of bullets, basically. Essentially, yes. But the U.S. has always prided itself I know. on having the most advanced military in the world. How is that even possible? The report points to bottlenecks in the U.S. defense industry's ability okay. to produce critical components. Sure. We're talking about things like rocket motors, yeah. processors, yeah. those highly specialized castings and bearings mm. for precision machinery. Even down to the microelectronics that go into missile guidance systems. Right. And perhaps most importantly, the talent pool. Okay. The skilled labor force that's necessary to manufacture and maintain these complex weapon systems. So you're saying there just aren't enough skilled engineers, technicians? There are not. Not enough machinists to meet the demands of modern warfare. That's a lot to unpack. It is. So it's not just about having the blueprints for advanced weaponry. Yeah. It's about having the capacity to actually build them at scale. Yes. And and quickly if needed. Quickly, yes. Right. I Building a single missile, for example. Yeah. Can take up to two years. Two years, start to finish. Wow. And even if we could magically ramp up production overnight, 
Uh, Where are we going to find the people to actually do the work? That's a great question. Yeah. So the CECC report, yeah. it's basically saying that the U.S. might not be as ready for a fight right. as we'd like to think. Mm. So what can be done about this? I mean, is there any way to fix these problems quickly? The CECC is recommending a bipartisan approach to address these shortcomings. Okay. And this is where, ironically, the cyclical nature of U.S. politics, with power shifting between parties, yeah. can actually be a strength. Bipartisan, you mean Democrats and Republicans actually finding common ground? Yes. I'm intrigued. Why would that be a good thing in this context? This cyclical power dynamic, it prevents any single party from dominating for too long. I see. It forces a certain level of cooperation and compromise, mm -hmm. which leads to a more balanced and measured approach okay. to complex issues like defense policy. It also ensures that a wider range of viewpoints are considered, right, potentially yeah. leading to more robust and sustainable solutions. It's like the U.S. political system, for all its flaws, actually has a built-in mechanism yes. for promoting collaboration and long-term thinking. You could say that. Wow. And this stands in stark contrast to political systems like China's, uh -huh. where transitions of power can be abrupt and often result in purges, making long-term planning and consistent policy implementation much more difficult. Yeah, I see what you mean. This whole discussion, it started with like leaks and open chatter right. about military plans. Mm -hmm. And it's got me thinking about the changing media landscape. Okay. Traditional media outlets are struggling. Yeah. Even those with powerful backers. I mean, did you hear that MSNBC might be up for sale? I did. It's wild, right? It is. Microsoft, the tech behemoth, mm -hmm. can't even save a major news network. It's a sign of the times. What does that tell us about the future of media and information? It points to the rise of alternative media, independent voices, citizen journalists. Yeah. The entire landscape is changing. Right. And with that comes a critical need for discernment. Uh -huh. We're living in an era of information overload. It really is. And it's more important than ever to evaluate your sources carefully. So let's let's take stock of where we are in this deep dive, okay? okay. We've got this potentially game-changing military cooperation <sighs> between the U.S. and Japan, but concerns about U.S. defense production capacity, they linger. They do. Right? Yes. On top of that, we're seeing a rapidly evolving media environment. Right. Where information itself seems to be like weaponized. Mm. It feels like a lot to process, honestly. It certainly is. All of this raises a critical question yeah. about the very nature of power dynamics yeah. in the 21st century. We're witnessing traditional power structures being challenged, yeah. new players emerging, and a constant battle for narrative control. It's almost like we're living in a real life sci-fi novel yeah. where the lines between information technology and warfare are blurring. They are. What does this all mean for us? It underscores the importance of staying informed, engaged, and curious. Okay. We need to be critical thinkers, right. discerning consumers of information, and active participants right. in shaping the future. Well, on that note, we'll continue exploring this fascinating deep dive into U.S.-Japan military cooperation yeah. and the shifting tides of global power Right. after a short break. Stay tuned. Stay with us. And we're back diving even deeper into this U.S.-Japan military cooperation. You know, before the break, we were talking about the changing media landscape. Yeah. And how information itself is, like, becoming a weapon. Yeah. This information warfare concept. Right. It seems like it's becoming more and more relevant. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on that? It's fascinating the yeah. way this joint military plan was revealed, okay. the very public discussion surrounding it. Right. It's all part of a larger strategic game. Okay. It's about shaping perceptions, influencing decision making, mm. and ultimately deterring potential adversaries like China. So instead of tanks and troops, yeah. it's like leaks and press releases on the front lines. Exactly. Information is the ammunition. Precisely. And right. the battlefield isn't just some physical location anymore. It's right. the media landscape. Oh, okay. Both traditional and alternative. Think of it as a high-stakes chess match where the pieces are narrative okay. and counter-narratives. And players. Mm -hmm. Who are like the key players in this information war? It's not just governments anymore. Oh. We've got 
state-sponsored media, independent journalists, mm. social media influencers, right. even ordinary citizens with smartphones can contribute to the flow of information right. for better or worse. Which makes it even harder to figure out who to trust. Well, but. Right. It's like yeah. everyone has their own version of the truth now. Exactly. That's why critical thinking and media literacy are becoming essential survival skills. In the 21st century? Yes, in the 21st century. We need to be able to filter the noise, right. evaluate sources, and form our own informed opinions. You know, it's funny. You mentioned MSNBC potentially being sold. Mm -hmm. It's like even the big players yeah. in the media landscape are struggling they are. To adapt to this new environment. It's true. If a giant like Microsoft can't save a major news network, mm. what hope is there for the rest? It's a stark reminder that the old rules of media and influence, yeah. they're being rewritten. Right. The rise of alternative platforms, social media, independent voices. Uh -huh. It's fundamentally changed how we consume and share information. I see. And it's not just about the technology. Right. It's yeah. about shifting trust dynamics. So it's less about who has the biggest megaphone. Yes. And more about who people actually believe. Precisely. And this is where the concept of information warfare gets really interesting. Oh. It's not just about spreading propaganda or misinformation. Okay. It's also about undermining trust in legitimate sources. I see. Creating confusion and ultimately paralyzing decision making. So you're saying it's not just about controlling the message. Yeah. No. It's about like controlling the entire information ecosystem. Exactly. And this brings us back to the U.S.-Japan military cooperation. Okay. The way this information has been revealed. Yeah. The public discussion surrounding it. It's all part of a larger strategy to shape the narrative, mm -hmm. to deter China, yeah. and to reassure allies in the region. You said a couple of times now yeah. how important it is to be a critical thinker in this new information yeah. landscape. It is important. But like... For someone who might not be familiar with that term, right. what does that even mean? Good question. How do you become a critical thinker? It's about questioning everything. Okay. Evaluating sources, looking for biases, considering alternative perspectives. Mm -hmm. It's about actively engaging with information, not just passively consuming it. Right. Think of it as mental self-defense in the age of information overload. So it's less about knowing all the answers yeah. and more about knowing which questions to ask. Exactly. And this is a skill that's applicable to so many aspects of life. Yeah. Not just geopolitics or military strategy. Mm. It's about being an informed citizen. Right. A critical thinker. Huh. An engaged member of society. So let's bring this back to this specific topic at hand. Okay. Yeah. We've examined a lot of information about this U.S.-Japan military cooperation. Wow the potential risks, the opportunities, right. the changing media landscape, yeah. the whole idea of information warfare. It's a lot. If we had to like, distill all of this down to yeah. a few key takeaways for our listeners, okay. what would they be? Well, first and foremost, yeah. we're seeing a deepening of military cooperation Wait. between the U.S. and Japan, signaling a potential shift okay. in the balance of power in the Asia-Pacific region. Okay. And the joint military plan. Yes particularly the deployment of missile units, Yeah, that's a significant escalation it is. of their combined capabilities. Yes, their combined capabilities. And it seems like Japan is stepping into a more assertive role. Right, they are. Willing to take on a larger share of the security burden in the region. Absolutely. And this shift is partly driven by the perceived threat uh -huh. from China's increasing assertiveness. But it's also about Japan reasserting itself on the global stage. Okay. They want to be seen as a major player, capable of defending their own interests hmm. and contributing to regional stability. So we've got this like show of force from the U.S. and Japan. Yeah. But as we discussed earlier, there are also concerns. There are. About the U.S. defense industry's ability to keep up in a prolonged conflict. Hmm. It's like we're trying to project strength yeah. while also grappling with some serious vulnerabilities. It's a delicate balancing act for sure. It is. The CECC's findings, right. they highlight the crucial importance yeah. of a robust and resilient domestic industrial base. Okay. Relying solely on overseas suppliers mm. or scrambling to ramp up production during a crisis that's a recipe for disaster. And those recommendations for a bipartisan approach? Yes. They seem particularly relevant in the current political climate. 
Mm. It feels like our political system yeah. is more divided than ever. It does feel that way. Can Democrats and Republicans even agree on the time of day anymore? That's a fair question. Right. But the fact that the CECC, a bipartisan commission, yeah. is urging cooperation on this issue, right. it suggests that there's at least some recognition mm. of the shared threat and the need for a united front. So there's a glimmer of hope that when it comes to national security, yeah. our political leaders can put aside their differences yeah. and work together for the common good. Let's hope so. The stakes are simply too high yeah. to allow partisan politics to undermine our national security interests. You know, amidst all this talk of military strategy, defense mm -hmm. production, and political maneuvering, right? it's easy to forget that there are, like, Real people. Yes. Real lives at stake here. Correct? These decisions, these narratives, yeah. they have real world consequences. You're absolutely right. It's easy to get caught up in the geopolitical chess game yeah. and lose sight of the human dimension. The soldiers on the front lines, the civilians caught in the crossfire. Hmm. Their stories are often lost in the noise of the headlines. It's a sobering thought. It is. As we you know, delve into these complex topics. Yeah. It's crucial to remember the human cost of conflict. Yes. And to approach these issues with empathy and compassion. I agree. We need to be mindful of the human dimension. Right. Not just the strategic calculations. Yeah. These aren't just abstract concepts we're discussing. Mm. They have real world implications for people's lives. So we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. Military plans, defense production challenges, right. the changing media landscape, mm -hmm. the importance of critical thinking. It's a lot to process. It is. And I think this exploration has revealed some fascinating insights okay. into the interconnectedness of all these issues. Yeah. We're seeing how geopolitical shifts, mm -hmm. technological advancements, mm -hmm. and evolving information dynamics, yeah. they're all converging to create a truly complex and challenging global environment. It's almost like we're living in a real-life sci-fi novel. I know, right? Where the lines between information technology and warfare are, like, increasingly blurred. They are. Where do we go from here? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? But I think the key takeaway is this. Okay. We are living in an era of unprecedented information saturation. Right. And the ability to critically evaluate, yeah. synthesize, and apply information uh -huh. has never been more important. You keep coming back to this idea of critical thinking. I do. It's like you're saying that's the superpower. Yeah. We all need to develop they do. to navigate this complex world. I truly believe it is. Right. The U.S.-Japan military cooperation, right. the challenges facing the U.S. defense industry, mm. the shifting media landscape. Yeah. These are all interconnected pieces of a larger puzzle. I see. And to make sense of it all, yeah. we need to develop the skills and habits of mind all right. that allow us to see the big picture, connect the dots. Uh -huh. And make informed decisions. It's a call to action, really. It it's is. a yeah. call to be more engaged. Yeah. Yes. More informed and more critical in our thinking. Exactly. It's about taking responsibility yeah. for our own understanding of the world. Well said. If there's one key message mm. we want our listeners to take away from this deep dive, okay. what would it be? I think it would be this. The world is complex. Yeah. And it's changing faster than ever before. Right. But we're not passive bystanders mm -hmm. in this process. Okay. We have the power to be informed, right. engaged, right. Okay. and critically aware. The U.S.-Japan military cooperation, the challenges facing the U.S. defense industry, yes. the evolving media landscape, mm. these are all interconnected pieces they are. of a larger puzzle. Exactly. And to make sense of it all, yeah. We need to develop the skills and habits of mind right. that allow us to see the big picture, connect yeah. the dots. And make informed decisions. It's a call to action for all of us, really. Uh, a call to be more engaged, yeah. more informed, all right. and more critical in our thinking. Indeed. The future belongs to those who can effectively navigate this complex information landscape, yeah. who can discern truth from falsehood, Mm. and who can apply knowledge to create a better world. We've reached the end of our deep dive. We have. We hope you found it informative, yeah. thought-provoking, uh -huh. and maybe even a little bit unsettling. Perhaps. The world is changing. It is. And it's up to each of us to stay informed, yes. stay engaged, mm -hmm. and stay curious. 
as always, right. keep asking questions, keep challenging assumptions, yeah. and keep seeking knowledge. It is. That's the best way to navigate the complexities of our time right. and shape a future that we can all be proud of. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And until next time, stay curious. Feels like we're all playing catch up, you know? Yeah. Trying to learn the rules of a game that's constantly changing mm -hmm. right in front of us. And in this ever shifting game, yeah. critical thinking, that's our most valuable tool. It really does feel that way. We can't just passively absorb information anymore. Yeah. We have to question everything, right? Evaluate our sources, look for biases, uh -huh. try to connect the dots ourselves. You've really emphasized the importance of being a critical thinker. It's crucial. Throughout this whole deep dive. Yeah. It sounds like we need to develop a whole new set of mental tools. Mm. Like a new way of thinking. It's true. To navigate this complex information landscape. It is complex. It feels almost overwhelming at times, to be honest. It's understandable to feel overwhelmed. Right. The volume of information we're exposed to daily is staggering. Yeah. But like any skill, mm -hmm. critical thinking can be learned okay. and honed with practice. Mm -hmm. So, so much of what we've discussed today has focused on like yeah. these large scale forces at play. U.S.-Japan military cooperation. Mm. China's growing influence. Yeah. The shifting media landscape. It's a lot. It's easy to feel like we're just tiny players in this grand game, you know. I understand that. With little ability to influence the outcome. It's a common sentiment, but I would argue that individual actions and choices, they do matter. Okay, how so? As we've discussed, information itself has become a battleground. Right. Each of us has a role to play mm -hmm. in shaping the information landscape okay. in promoting truth and accountability. So you're saying? By becoming more discerning consumers of information. Right. By demanding better from our media. Mm. By engaging in thoughtful dialogue, right. we can collectively contribute yeah. to a more informed and resilient society. So it's not about feeling powerless or overwhelmed. No. It's about taking ownership of our own understanding of the world. Exactly. And using that understanding to make informed choices. Precisely. We might not be able to single-handedly change the course of global events. Right. But we can choose how we engage with information, mm. how we form our opinions, okay. and how we participate in shaping the narrative. Well said. If there was one key message we want our listeners to take away from this deep dive, yeah. what would it be? I think it would be this. Mm. The world is complex. Yeah, it is. And it's changing faster than ever before. For sure. But we're not passive bystanders in this process. Right. We have the power to be informed, engaged, right. and critically aware. Okay. Well, we've reached the end of our deep dive. We have. And it's been a fascinating journey, honestly. It has. We hope you found it insightful and thought-provoking. As always. Yeah. Keep asking questions. Right. Keep challenging assumptions and keep seeking knowledge. It is. That's the best way to navigate the complexities of our time. Yeah. And shape a future that we can all be proud of. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And until next time, stay curious.